Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Zotac's GTX 1060 Mini. Uh, so first things first, let's just identify the voltages as usual. Core voltage is, surprisingly enough, generated by only this part of this whole VRM section. This down here is actually the memory voltage. So, yeah. That's just sort of layouting things to make this look like a fi five phase when it's a four plus one. Not that it really matters because it's still plenty powerful. So that's our core voltage. This is memory voltage down here. Uh, over here, you can see a the PLL VRM. Yeah, it's the PLL voltage for the GPU core. That's a very minor rail. I am not sure what it's actually made of. We will not discuss it. It doesn't matter. It's not affected by overclocking. It doesn't have any impact on overclocking. You might as well ignore that it exists, but it's a, it's a VRM that needs to be working for the card to turn on. So I, I do take the time to at least mention that it exists. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at the, the actual important VRMs, core voltage and memory voltage. So. Core voltage is controlled by this right here. And this right here is a UP9511. And this is an eight phase voltage controller capable of up to two megahertz switching frequency. And that's off the top of my head. So if that's wrong, do co correct me in the comments. But I do, if my memory serves me correctly, then it is a two megahertz uh, switching frequency voltage controller. It offers up to eight phases uh, of PWM signals. So, you know, it's actually really underutilized here because Zotac opted for a four phase design. And there's actually a good reason why they're using a UP9511, which is an eight phase voltage controller on a four phase VRM. That is the only other voltage controller that is officially supported by NVIDIA, which is the UP9509 only supports up to three phases. So the moment you want four, five, six, seven, or eight phases, you need to use this one, uh, unless you're EVGA who somehow get away with using other voltage controllers, and I think Asus as well. But generally, if you don't want to mess, like if you want to follow the NVIDIA reference designs, you're limited to the UP9511 and the UP9509, uh, which is what Zotac went with here, the 9511. So. That's what controls the VRM, and the VRM is indeed a true four-phase VRM. We have four uh, inductors. We also have four drivers, though you can't see them. There's one here and one there. There's another one down here, and there's another one on the back of the PCB, and another one for the memory voltage also on the back of the PCB. So that's why you can't see those. Um, the MOSFETs themselves making up each phase are this lot right here. So that's actually all the components making up one phase like that. And this right there is a 3054 from Ubic. So that's a QM30, it's a QM3054M6. Um, and that's from Ubic Semiconductor. And that is a very, very powerful MOSFET. Um, at 100 degrees centigrade, it is rated to do 61 amps continuous drain current. Now, I've recently been working on getting better VRM rating methodology because uh, continuous current ratings don't really apply to MOSFETs that are being switched on and off 100,000 plus times a second. Uh, so, you know, VRMs normally operate between 200 kilohertz and 2 megahertz. So these guys are not continuous drain, especially not the high side. The high side basically switches on for very short periods of time to pulse a bit of power into the inductors, and then the low side takes the bulk of the current handling. So the continuous ratings aren't very useful for that, and I've been working on remedying that. People who follow the Facebook would know what I'm talking about. I've built a little calculator based off of a which basically applies a, um, a you know, sort of MOSFET current rating methodo calculation methodology, which I stole from an article written by a Texas Instruments uh, electrical no power engineer. Yeah, so electrical engineering specified on power electronics, so that would be VRMs and that kind of thing. Actually, it would basically only be VRMs. So I used that, you know, 
calculation to calculate uh, expected current handling capabilities for VRM scenarios. And the absolute maximum that you could run through the high side here uh, at 1.1 volts. So through this guy at 1.1 volts, it's 75 amps at 125 degrees and 500 kilohertz switching frequency. If you lower the switching frequency, you can push more current. If you raise the sw switching frequency, you can push less current. If the temperature goes up, less current. If the temperature goes down, more current. If you raise the voltage up, you can uh, push less current. But at 1.1 volts, which is sort of where a 1060 operates, it'll be able to deliver 75 amps. And, you know, NVIDIA cards don't really scale from extra voltage, so it doesn't really matter that at, so I didn't really, so actually, you know what, whatever, I can change one number here and calculate it. So say we did give the, you know, uh, did ask for 1.5 volts. If you did ask for 1.5 volts, this rating goes from 75 amps to 70 amps, which really isn't much of a difference, which is basically why I wanted to weasel my way out of saying it. Um, so yeah, 75, uh, 70 amps at 125, 1.5 volts, 75 amps at 125, 1.1 volts. Um, very simple. So, also very, very overkill. Low side MOSFETs. There's two of these guys, because surprisingly enough, this, the 3054, is not that dis not very different from the 3056 down here. So yes, these guys right here are literally just that. Okay, so same same full number, just 3056. So, 3056s are rated for 65 amps continuous at 100 degrees, and these are low side MOSFETs. So it, when I, so basically the calculator, uh, VRM calculator, calculated that at 125 degrees, 500 kilohertz, uh, each of these will be able to handle 47 amps at 1.1 uh, volts. There is two of them for to give you a total low side current handling capability of 94 amps. So 125, 1.1 volts. Whereas, and combined, you know, they do 94, uh, 94. So each phase is basically limited by the low side, the high side MOSFET. So assuming that you somehow actually manage to push this much power through the VRM, um, this MOSFET would always give up first at 125 degrees. So, yeah. High side is going to go, you know, the high side MOSFET, because the, the high side MOSFET is capable of doing 75 amps. Uh, the low side FETs are capable of doing 94, 94 together. So if you actually try to overload the VRM, the high side MOSFET will be the first one to give up. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how the VRM is going to fail. And the total combined current capability for the whole VRM, therefore, is the high side MOSFET current rating multiplied by number of phases, in which case we are getting 300 amps at 125 degrees, uh, generating 1.1 volts, 500 kilohertz switching frequency. And I'm really annoyed that I have to assume the switching frequency, because this, you like this has a huge impact on the high side's current rating and unfortunately the only way to get that is uh, knowing what the voltage controller is to program to but since Nvidia stopped using I to C you can't actually like get that data and I can't get that data because I don't even have the card and also the um, well if I had the card then I could probably just stab, I could just stab it with an oscilloscope and get the switching frequency but I don't have the card so I can't do that so I'm just guessing that it's going to be 500 kilohertz because that that's sort of usually where you'll see GPUs running these days because the because of basically all the power efficiency stuff on the GPUs causes really really big transient loads which basically means GPUs go from pulling very little power to a lot of power very very quickly over and over again and the best way to deal with that is really high switching frequency so that's why you that's why i'm guessing that it'll run at 500 kilohertz um so yeah that's sort of the core voltage very 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 overkill um 
So good job Zotac there, but yeah, there's not really much more to say about this. Moving on, low si uh, memory VRM, same MOSFETs, 3054, 3056, 3056, much higher voltage. This one's generating 1.5 volts. So the whole VRM is again capable of 70 amps, 1.5 volts. Uh, extremely overkill for GDDR5. I think the only reason why this is using such high-end MOSFETs is you get a bulk discount when you use the same component over and over and over again. So, the card is very, very good. I can't see you blowing this up anytime soon. I can't see you, uh, you know, really abusing this card enough to ever overload the VRM. I wouldn't be surprised if you could take off all the heat sinks, except, of course, the core heat sink, and let the VRM just sit out in the open air on its own and cool itself. Uh, because even at 125 degrees centigrade, it is perfectly capable of running a, you know, GTX 1060. Um, with a heat sink, it just gets even better. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's that for the main VRMs. Is there anything I wanted to mention? Right, yes, the main VRMs do actually get a heat sink. It's a small aluminum heat sink that screws in through these two holes. So, yeah, that's that. And for modding options on the card, I have no idea how to mod the memory voltage because I can't find the memory voltage controller because I can't read the letters on most of the ICs on here. I'm actually very lucky to be even able to get the, the MOSFETs. Uh, so, yep, that, that's great. But still, thank you for thank you to Tech, uh, tech Power Up for you know taking such high res PCB photos that I can actually get some useful information out of them. Down here, uh, well, so modding options, you could obviously do a V-Core Vault mod through the 9511. Uh, I'm not gonna detail that. There's sort of no point of doing that on NVIDIA cards from what I've heard, though I do plan to try it myself and make sure that it actually has no point. And for power modding, there's this shunt resistor and that shunt resistor. And you can basically just short them out with Cool Laboratory Liquid Ultra or by soldering other shunts across them. So for this one, you would want to opt for a 10 milliohm, and this one, I think you'd want to opt for a three or four milliohm. Um, there, that's ohm, that's the ohm symbol. So yeah, if you just solder those extra shunts on there, you'll get a power draw, well, observed power draw uh, reduction and that'll basically allow you to not hit the power limit as quickly. Uh, interesting thing to note about the Cool Laboratory Liquid Ultra, I've been sent a message by somebody, I can't remember who, where the Cool Laboratory Liquid Ultra apparently dissolved the solder, like mixed with it and basically, you know, shunt fell off the card, um, which is news to me. Uh, I will have to admit I've never done this mod. I've seen this mod done by lots of other people, which is why I thought it's perfectly safe. Uh, and actually it would have never, you know, occurred to me in my wildest dreams that the uh, alloy that Cool Laboratory Liquid Ultra uses would, you know, eat tin because lead-free solder is pretty much just tin. And that's what you see on all consumer electronics today thanks to some regulations from, I do believe Europe or somewhere, I don't know, uh, but the, yeah. So lead-free solder on everything, and yeah, this uh, cool laboratory liquid ultra can apparently eat that and make your shunts fall off. So that's something to watch out for. It's not a huge deal because basically it'll just disconnect the 12 volts from your GPU, uh, which sucks because the card won't work. But in the, in the grand scheme, of, yeah, actually that sucks really badly for most people because that would void your warranty. Damn. Um, so I guess be very careful to not apply really large amounts so that it doesn't soak into the tin as much as it could. Because um, obviously the more you use, the more it's going to dilute the, dilute the metal holding the shunts in place. And I think that might be why nobody else has so far ran into that issue where the shunt would actually, you know, just fall right off. Um, because I guess they didn't use as much as the person who did have the shunt fall off. So, yeah, that, that's sort of something to watch out for. And I guess that makes that mod also completely invalid. So at this point, it's like you can't power mod NVIDIA cards without voiding your warranty, I guess. 
So that kind of sucks, but there's nothing I can really do about that. And sorry to everybody who might end up with issues from the shop mod. I didn't know any better. I Like, nobody else knew any better either, to be fair. So don't blame me. I was just following other overclockers' tricks for doing this. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's that for the power mod. Um, is there anything else I wanted to mention? Well, no. This video is long enough at this point, 15 minutes, so let's pack it up here. That means you got to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and comment uh, something. Uh, ask any questions. You can do that in the comments. You can also complain about the video's quality down in the comments. You can do all kinds of things down in the comments. I don't care. You're free to do whatever you please. So leave a comment if you are so inclined. And what else? Right, do consider donating to my Patreon. You can find a link to that down in the description below the video. Uh, there's no shirts uh, available for AHOC right now, though I did finally get my shirt to, to actually arrive at my place because the first time apparently the post missed me and then got returned and yeah, it took forever for me to get my shirt, so. Yeah, I finally have that. Um, and yeah, and do not expect any content uh, coming very soon because I am going to Germany, Berlin, no, wait, yeah, Berlin, for the Hardware Bot World Tour uh, Championship or Hardware Wor World Championship. I keep getting that messed up, but whatever. It's the big overclocking you know, finale for the whole wide world by Hardware Bot. And I'm going there, not as a competitor, unfortunately, I suck too much to do that, um, but as a commentator. So, you know, I'll be on the stream for three days or something and commentating some really epic overclocking action. It'll be on the Overclocking TV channel, and it'll obviously be rehosted on my own Twitch channel. So if you want to go watch that, just hop on either of those. And that's running from the 2nd to the 4th. So that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, unless my sense of time is completely off as well. But that wouldn't really be that surprising, because uh, it usually is. Um, what else is there? Right, uh, excuses for why there hasn't been any content. Uh, explaining VR, how VRMs fail is really, really hard. I got sick and my internet got disconnected. The getting sick is not really my fault. Um, Luckily, it wasn't anything very serious. You can probably hear that I'm still recovering from that, but no fever, no nothing. So I was still fully functional. I just couldn't record videos because, as you can sort of hear, my my voice was kind of terrible. Um, not that I would get tired, but like it, it sounded awful. And I already don't like the way I sound as of right now, so recording with me sounding like, you know, somebody shoved an apple down my neck uh, wouldn't sound that much, but would sound even worse. Uh, the other thing, the internet, that is my fault. Um, won't happen again, but yeah, uh, forgot to pay the bill. I forget to do, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person who would forget to turn up to his own funeral, so that's no surprise there. I suck at being an adult. And on that note, see you guys next time.